Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining Red River for another webinar. Um, today, we'll be talking a little bit about Microsoft Teams. My name is Gary Alley, Marketing Specialist here at Red River, and I'm joined with Jeff Porter, Sales Engineer. Um, in this presentation, we'll be showing a little bit of Microsoft Teams interface, and we'll be also showcasing some of the features and all the functionalities. Also, we'll be doing a live demo um, that Jeff will be presenting for us. In this webinar, we are using Microsoft Teams live webinar, and we'd love for you to participate. In the right corner, you'll see a little um, Q&A button. In that, you can ask, ask us questions, um, put comments out there throughout the presentation, and make sure to put your name so we can also actually respond to some of your questions throughout the presentation. So let's get started. Jeff, I'll let you take the mic. Well, thank you, Gary, and welcome to another Teams webinar. I have a lot of information to present to you today, and not just one, but two demonstrations. The Teams desktop, and we're gonna show you a Teams meeting. First, let's start with some Teams news. Uh, the last webinar, I showed you this Gardner report for UCAS, which stands for Unified Communications as a Service, showing Microsoft's position high and to the right, and I also included the strengths and cautions. So I just show this to you to remind you of the position that Microsoft's in with Teams. And if you didn't hear last month, <laughs> Microsoft Teams had more than 20 million active users and that beats Slack. So that's quite an accomplishment. I also wanna talk about an event I attended last month put on by Polly and Ribbon, of which we are partners of, and they called it UC Market Insights. UC Market Insights was a survey they conducted of over 4,800 4, technology decision makers back in April of this year. The companies range from five employees up to a thousand employees, and we're focusing on the Microsoft Teams responses. So the first question here is, what are your company's plans regarding Microsoft Teams? Well, more than most had deployed, are deploying, or they're planning to deploy Microsoft Teams. The outlier are the small businesses, one to 20 employees. More than 80% of them are unaware or not planning to do anything with Teams. If you're deploying Teams, 60% will continue to use their current voice communication service. Everyone's using Teams for IM, chat, presence, collaboration, of course, but nobody seems to be using or not many are using Teams calling. And we're wondering why that is. Could it be the lack of Teams telephones? We'll see. So Microsoft Teams really is the modern desktop and let's show you what that is. It's called the hub of the modern workplace because it leverages all the applications in Microsoft 365. It also can be highly customized and integrated across the entire Microsoft 365 cloud. It does rely on SharePoint and OneDrive for storage and Teams is where I spend my work day because it's where I do all my work, you know, collaborating. And especially in our case, I spend my time in Teams because we use it not just for collaboration and meetings, but also for calling. Microsoft Teams is certainly used for collaboration, but also for meetings with rich video and presentations and for voice calling. That's why I use it for everything but email. Teams meetings also has live events, which is what we're using today to present this webcast to you. And calling can be added with Microsoft phone system and a PSTN calling plan. You'll also want to add audio conferencing to your meetings that provides you a PSTN call in number and that call in number can also be toll free. So let's show you the Microsoft Teams desktop. Um, excuse me for a moment while we exit out of the presentation and pull up our demo PC. This is a demo account we have set up. And down the left here are the major functions of Teams, the icons here on the left. Here's what I found. I think my watch <laughs> was just set off. Um, so in activity, you can see not just your own activity, but your activity feed. Here's where chat and instant messaging are. And I'm gonna come back and go deeper into these functions. Here's Teams. We have a demo team with channels, and in those channels you have conversations. Also your calendar, and this is not just your meetings, but your Outlook calendar as well, so any of your appointments will show up here. Um, calls, of course, for making voice and video phone calls, and files. 
Let's move over here to the top right hand corner at the profile picture and click on that. Um, the reason I want to show you this, this is where you can set your presence status and it will automatically change, of course, too. Um, and you can also program a status message, something like I'm on vacation and you can set a date for that to expire. You can also access saved messages, zoom the screen, program keyboard shortcuts, um, update your team's application um, or download the mobile app from here. But let's go to settings. Under settings, you can stand, you can change the look of the application, um, but let's look at notifications where you can change how you're notified of what's happening on Teams. It can be intrusive or not. That's up to you. Um, you can also set your devices from here. This is a remote desktop connection, so we're not showing the devices. And you can also make a test call to ensure that that Bluetooth headset is in fact working. Permissions we're going to skip, but if we go into calls, we want to show you the call answering rules here where you can set your calls to ring you or forward or when they're unanswered, where they go. It doesn't have to be voicemail. It could be a different destination or it could even be a call queue if you need something like call coverage. You can configure your voicemail here, your ringtones, and of course, um, accessibility using TTY. Moving to the middle of the screen is a search field. Now you can search by anything, but you can also use special commands such as slash to pull up command shortcuts or the at symbol to show who you collaborate with the most at the top and access real-time information. Next to that is a pen on a piece of paper. If you click on that, it takes you to the chat function and you can see some of the chats here. They are persistent and the chats are really a lot like a Teams conversation, except the storage uses OneDrive. You can also make video and voice calls from here and share desktops. The Teams icon is where all your teams are listed, and I only have one showing here, but if I had more, they would, they would show below. We have a demo team with channels such as General, which always exists. Think of this as a lobby per se. And then we've added some other channels like Demo, Sales A, Sales B, and Sales C. Down at the bottom, you can join or create a team directly, or if you hit the gear, you can manage your teams. In fact, let's go back here to the demo team and show you that I directly on the team, I can access management functionality as well. Add another channel or a member or even leave the team myself or delete it. If I created it, I can certainly delete it. Um, and there's some, an, an, some analytics shown here too. We're going to skip the calendar for now and move down to calls. I just want to explain that this is a demo account, so it does not have a telephone number associated with it. Therefore, I do not have a dial pad to call PSTN numbers, but I do have my contacts, right? My call history of which there isn't any um, and voicemail. In speed call, you can program yourself as well um, and even put them into groups. If I had a telephone number assigned, I would have a dial pad showing here as well as the telephone number itself. The files function um, is where you can see your, your recently uploaded um, or downloaded files from Teams and access your OneDrive storage. The dot 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 for more allows you to add applications to the left bar here. Um, and if I go further down, there is a help function and help allows you to look up certain topics, um, but also see what's new, which is pretty handy. So there's a December 13th feature that was added for Linux. Um, but as you scroll through here, you can see that just about every other day they're adding functionality to Teams. Now, let's go back to the calendar. So in the calendar, um, they allow you to see your work day, work week, or the entire week. And again, this views not just your meetings, but all of your appointments. And you can see we have a meeting that we used earlier to do some testing here, but I'm going to add a new meeting. So I'm going to click up at new meeting. We'll title this demo. Um, we're going to assign this. We're in Yellowstone to the Yellowstone room. You don't have to assign a room. 
But when I do that and a Teams room system or video teleconference system is associated with that room, it's going to get the join button automatically and it will also reserve the room, of course. Um, let's pick a time so that we don't have to wait till 1230 for this to happen. And let's extend that to one and let's just type some dialogue. This is a demo. Now over here, I can select a channel to have this meeting in and, and certainly if it's you know, for a particular channel or the members of that channel, I should do that. But I'm just going to invite a list of users um, that we want to use for this demo. So the first one is CWPS demo and CWPS demo two and Old Faithful. Uh, myself, of course. And the last one I'm going to add is me on my Google Gmail address as a guest. So as part of the meetings demo later in the webcast, we're going to show you that a guest that does not have teams um, or any membership to teams at all can join a teams meeting by simply using a browser. So I'll press enter there. This all looks correct. Let's schedule it. Now before we go back um, to show you some of the endpoints and devices, I want to take a quick look at the invite here. If you notice, we have a link to join the meeting and some meeting options where you can also access um, other ways to, to join the meeting. And this is pretty important. We have Poly's Real Connect 365, and that allows standards-based video teleconference systems to join our Teams meetings. Um, and the URI is shown here. This is a SIP address, um, or you can pull up some alternate dialing instructions. Now, in the last webinar, um, someone actually reached out and asked, hey, how come there's no local call-in numbers here? The reason for that is this is a demo account that does not have the audio conferencing feature. But I want to show you an invite that does have the audio calling feature that was scheduled by me because, of course, I do have that. And you see that it does show the call in numbers, including a toll free number and the conference ID. And in fact, if I'm mobile, it probably happens at my desktop too, however, I'd use the app. If I'm mobile and click on that, do you see that it has the pauses and the meeting conference ID in the string already? so that when I'm driving, I don't have to try to dial that manually. Makes it quite easy. So that's showing you the team's desktop. Let's go back to our presentation. Let's not do that. Give me a moment. <laughs> it's being stubborn again. There we go. Let's look at the endpoints that are available, and there's lots of different devices. <clears throat> You've seen this slide before, um, and I'm going to show you a lot more detail on the new Poly CCX Teams phones in just the next slide or two, um, but I want to go over the other devices as well. Um, the Poly Trio 8800 can be a Teams native audio device, but it also does a lot of other things. In fact, today, this webcast video, audio, not the video, is brought to you by a Poly Trio 8800. There's also a model that's a little bit smaller, has a little bit less mic pickup range, and of course is a little bit less expensive. The Poly 8500 is also available for a speakerphone. For personal use devices, you have things like the Poly Vox Box and some other speaker pucks, so that if you're in a meeting and they don't have a speakerphone, or you're working from home or in a quiet location, that can be your full duplex speakerphone. Poly released the Alera 60, which is a smartphone dock. This is a very unique device because it allows you to use your cellular telephone, smartphone um, on a dock. And that dock uses an application to give you extended functionality, such as a dial pad, a display, a speakerphone, and it can have a handset or a wired or wireless headset. And they do bundle those together. Um, it also has a Teams button, and I'm going to talk more about a Teams button later in the slides. For headsets, of course, you have Bluetooth headsets such as a Poly Voyager 6200. I just received a 5200, which is styled a little bit differently, um, works quite well, and is a Teams approved device so that when I use it in Teams, the answer button works and the other functionality in the headset works in my Teams application. You can also also go with a standard wired headset, such as a black wire USB headset. Now here's more detail on those new Poly CCX phones. 
For Microsoft Teams, three models are being released initially. The CCX400, which is an entry level or common area phone. The CCX500, which would probably be for most staff, office workers and knowledge workers. And then the CCX600 is a larger screen, probably for managers and executives. There's a couple of differences in the phones. The CCX 500s and 600s have the modularity feature, as they call it, which means you can order it without a handset and you can bundle it with headsets. They also have the well-known poly audio features such as HD voice and acoustic fence. So those are a little bit different than the entry level CCX 400 phone. Let's take a closer uh, or a deep dive into the CCX 400 entry level common area phone. Um, both the 400 and the 500 have a five inch screen and all of these CCX Teams phone phones are based on Android 9 operating system. The fact that it's on Android 9 is an, an important difference because other devices are on older Android um, OS systems and Android 9 is going to allow this device to take on future Teams functionality. Um, they still have analog headset connections and uh, USB ports, of course, um, but this entry level phone qualifies for a common area phone license from Microsoft. This is a brand new license. And as you can see here, it's only $8 a month to add this as a common area phone, maybe in your lobby, break room, copy room, or even just a, a handset for your conference room. Um, this gets us over the barrier that a lot of clients had when there were no phones available. Um, certainly an application, a software application can be used and is probably preferred by most users, but you still have those areas where you actually need a phone and this meets that requirement. The CCX 500 is basically styled the same way, um, but has Bluetooth included. Um, this is more for a Teams user and it's the first model that can be ordered without the handset. So notice the handset cradle is stripped and you can use a headset. Um, or you can order it bundled with a headset. Um, also includes the polyacoustic fence and HD voice features, which are important for good quality audio. And it introduces that dedicated Microsoft Teams button. That Teams button is gonna allow you to access Cortana, which is Microsoft speech recognition. And as I said, you can order this um, bundled with handsets, headsets, um, wired or wireless. Um, the CCX 600, the next model, gives you a larger screen, a seven inch multi-touch LCD screen and includes the integrated Bluetooth, um, but also has integrated Wi-Fi. The other sets can work on Wi-Fi, but you have to add an optional dongle. Uh, the, the CCX 7, 600 includes integrated Wi-Fi, so you don't, don't even have to have a wire to connect it. Here's a side-by-side -side of all three models. Um, the CCX 400 list price is $309. The CCX 500 list price is $439. And the 600 is $569. Those are list prices. Um, and of course, there may be some professional services required also. Um, and there's always discounts available. So let's talk about the team's meeting room solutions. Um, and you can mix and match this hardware any way you like. That is the advantage of using the Microsoft Teams meeting software. In small rooms, you can use something as simple as a webcam. Logitech makes a smart dock. Logitech also makes the tap unit down here, but the cameras can be placed on any of these units. Here's a Lenovo ThinkSmart 500 showing the new PolyCube camera, which I'll have more for you on next. Um, and there's also a new HP slice that can be bundled with something like a Poly Eagle Eye 4 camera, which is a USB camera that pan tilts and zooms. Uh, and you see a smart dock here also from Poly or the, the Poly Studio with a smart dock from Poly. Um, the studio I'll also show you here next, but that's a group framing and speaker tracking um, sound bar um, that can be everything, your mics, your output audio um, and, and your camera. The Crestron Flex system here in the bottom corner, that is for large rooms that need to have integrated AV, such as speakers and mics, maybe um, Crestron remote control, um, typically something you would get from an AV vendor. The Poly Studio has been wildly popular and they also released this new Q, <clears throat> excuse me. 
And the way that it enhances your meetings is because it has the group framing and speaker tracking. So the meeting's actually being produced as you um, meet. Uh, it's a 4K camera that allows that. And the other great feature about the Poly, especially for a huddle room, is this 100 degree field um, where you can sit very close to that camera and it will still pick you up. It uses just a USB port, right? And it includes a six element, um, six microphones, being forming microwave array with a 12 foot pickup range. So that 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 is pretty good for mics, especially in a huddle space. It does include the poly features noise block and acoustic fence, and it can accept Bluetooth stereo audio. Kind of nice if you want to play some music. This device can be managed and deployed just over Wi-Fi using Poly's PDMS, the Poly Device Management Service. That's a cloud service for deployment management. The Cube is interesting. It comes in two different hardware models. One of those hardware models is a USB device, much like the studio, just without the speakers and only two built-in microphones. But the other, the other model is for legacy poly video systems, such as the Group Series, that use that HDCI port. It has the same speaker tracking and group framing technology built into it. Um, and these cameras are not expensive at all and provide you um, some pretty good functionality. Let's dig a little deeper into what these Microsoft Teams rooms are because they're a software and hardware solution. The software, of course, is Microsoft software, originally released as a Skype room system back in January 2019. Now it's the Microsoft Team Systems version 4, Teams Rooms version 4. It requires the compatible hardware that I showed you earlier um, and a Windows 10 Enterprise license. It supports both Teams meetings and Skype meetings simultaneously, and it does require a license. However, Microsoft created a new license called a Teams Meeting Room that's only $15 a month. The hardware has to be a compatible Windows 10 touch screen PC platform. The touch screen is important for that join functionality. I showed you the Logitech Smart Dock and the Tap. Those both qualify as well as Lenovo ThinkSmarts, uh, the HP Slice. There'll be more hardware coming, but you should buy them bundled from a supplier, and that's how, certainly how we sell them, so that the software is already loaded on the hardware device. You need to bring your own HDMI flat screen or projector. It does support dual video sources, so it's two screens. Uh, and of course, you need a camera. So a USB camera it could be something as simple as a standard webcam um, up to something like the Poly Studio that I showed you earlier. You can also connect peripherals like mics and speakers using the audio in and out on these hardware platforms. But you need to consider the cabling, especially for the cameras and the video, because as this graphic shows, typically you have a conference table in the middle of the room. Your flat screen in camera are typically in the front of the room. If you ran those devices individually, you can see all the cabling that would be required between the front of the room and the conference table. There are ways around that. Let's look closer at the Logitech TAP Teams Room System and how they solve this problem. Um, and I just pulled this graphic right off their website so you can access it and look a little closer at this unit. Um, but they have three different consider three considerations here that are important. Um, and the first thing is to co-locate that computer near your video and your camera. And if we use a Poly Studio, that's also your audio source, right? Both mics and speakers. That TAP computer needs to be nearby. And the TAP computer uses the strong USB cable to connect to the Logitech TAP display that would typically be located on the conference table. Now the TAP display can also be wall mounted. So if you wanted to wall mount it right next to your screen, you could do that too. And no cabling would be required back to the conference table. So this solves that problem. And one more thing about that strong USB cable, it comes with a 10 meter cable, which is quite long. Um, but if you need a longer cable, it is available. And the cable can be broken down to fit in something as small as a three quarter inch conduit. So it's quite small. Here's some more Teams meeting room solutions. Of course, Microsoft has their Surface Hub 2 and a 2S that comes with a stand. Um, the Surface Hub 2 provides a very native Teams meeting experience. Um, it, it adds additional capabilities such as being able to grab OneDrive files um, and it has a Surface Hub pen 
with the touch screens that you can draw and write on the screen. And it is a 4K screen, so, so very high resolution. The other thing here shown is the Poly Real Connect 365 for Microsoft Teams. This is an interop service that allows you to use standards based video units. We're going to show that to you today as part of the demonstration on the meetings. <clears throat> we have a Cisco MX here and we also have a Poly Group Series 500 um, and it will allow them to receive that join button and join the Teams meeting. So here's how CWPS, who is now Red River, can help you. Our customers are looking for us to deliver business outcomes. Those include managed services, cloud solutions, and certainly security is important these days. And over the past few years, customers have been demanding that we operationalize their IT expenses. So our managed service offerings, offerings leverage the cloud solutions such as Microsoft 365, Azure, and also AWS to provide those business outcomes. So let us take your organization through the digital transformation journey. We promise that we can provide services and solutions to fit your business's technology needs. So let's finish this holiday webcast by putting on some I will Christmas go with attire. And we're gonna break out into this Teams meeting demo and see if we can get all these devices we have to join the meeting. <laughs> so first, I gotta get back to my demo machine. And you can see the invite that I started earlier with a join button so we'll start with joining from this device and it's going to be just us initially and we know we don't have a microphone <laughs> next i'm going to use my <clears throat> ipad because i have the team's mobile app here And there that is, and I'm going to hand that off to Gary because I'm going to walk over to all the other demo devices we have here, such as this PC is going to join as a guest. Remember when I sent the Gmail invite? Let's find my Gmail invite. Here it is here. And I can join using the link below. Oop. Fat fingered it here. Now it will ask me if I want to download the Windows app, but I'm just going to join using the browser on this one. Now, because this is a guest and not a user, uh, it's asking me if I want to admit the guest, right? So we are going to admit that guest. Good. On. This is a user on our network and certainly they're going to join the meeting. Uh, there it is. Without a mic. So now we're up to four people. Trio 8800 native teens audio device also gives me the join button so I can join for the audio of the meeting. Great for a conference room. Now we've got the large group series, but for some reason the invites are coming in very slow to our teens room system here. Uh, this is the Lenovo ThinkSmart. Um, but it's not its fault. There's something going on with the network because you watch when we finish this webcast, all the invites will pile in there. Hmm. So I'm going to have to add it manually. And if this happens to you, you can remember that you can always add somebody to your meeting. Oops. So we're going to invite that room system that is called CWPS demo two. And when I do that, it rings demo two to join meeting. And mic off. Awesome. Let's go up front. Let's see if Real Connect sent the invites. It did. I'm not going to join with the Cisco MX platform, but I want to show you that is a Cisco Touch 10 with a join button. It's also shown on the screen just as it should. So we can join the team's meeting with that. Poly group series up front. Same thing, we've got a join button. 
In this case, we are going to join. And we have to make sure we mute. Welcome to your service. So lastly, what I want to show you is the content camera feature on a Teams room system. We've got all these different video feeds going in from our attendees. But on the screen of the Teams room system, I have a desktop share, but it's actually a content share. And when I press that, I have a second camera. That's set on this whiteboard and you see I've written happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Um, and it took it took a snapshot of that. I can walk in front of that and I'm translucent and I can add to this. And as I write, you can see me write and if I back away, it's going to take another snapshot. So a great way to do some whiteboarding in a meeting and share that with all of the participants. It's on all of our video systems. So that completes the demonstration for Teams meetings. I think we have some yeah. wrap up to do. Well, what we do, we do have some questions coming along. I'm gonna actually take this off. Uh, but oh, come on, Gary. I leave, love the holiday spirit. Leave that so, okay, I guess why not? We were going to wear it for the Holiday. entire webcast, but uh, that's very hard. Yeah, but. <laughs> All right, so we have a few questions coming in. Um, let's go through you it. Take uh, yours off. I'm taking mine off. <laughs> well, Corinne, actually, throw us some questions real quick, and then I think we have some actually coming in here. Sure. So the first question is Does the Poly CCX series um, require that Cloud Connect service for native teams? No. Um, well, they are native Teams devices, so they did, do not require Cloud Connect. Um, in fact, um, unlike the previous VVX devices, everything is managed from the Microsoft 365 Cloud. The software, the firmware, as soon as you register it to Teams, actually Microsoft phone system, that's it. It's all controlled from the Microsoft admin portal. Next question is, we're having issues with Teams and SharePoint integration. Do you guys have SharePoint expertise? Of course we do. <laughs> and that's part of that digital transformation journey that I brought up earlier. Um, there are certain stages, we call it crawling, walking, and running, that need to be completed before you can use Teams. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Teams has heavy dependencies on SharePoint and OneDrive. So part of that process is using Exchange Online and SharePoint and having those configured and implemented properly. Once that's done, you normally move on to a Teams environment, um, but you might want to consider security before that. Um, that's certainly part of our transformation journey. Um, so maybe we need to go back and re-implement your SharePoint for you um, because SharePoint can definitely, well, Teams can wreck SharePoint and vice versa too. So um, I would suggest you re-implement SharePoint. The next question is, what are the best practices for governance, specifically around team creation and naming? Governance is also one of those steps in the digital transformation journey. Um, a lot of that is policy driven, um, but we certainly can add security so that only certain Teams users can spin up new Teams. Every time you spin up a team, you're spinning up a group and a SharePoint site, so that's why it's important to have that governance. But there's other functionality you might want to restrict as well, such as guest access or, or being able to add or delete members. So all of that is policy driven um, and can be instituted as part of your team's implementation. It's certainly a step that we go through. That's a secondary question. Can you add guests to the um, team? Absolutely. In fact, you, you can add guests to teams, mm -hmm. right, as a team member. Um, you saw me join a meeting as a guest. Um, they're enhancing that experience. Right now it is only at the team level. Once you add a guest to a team, they have access to all the channels, but that's going to be changed or has been changed. It happens so fast it's possible to keep up with. Where you'll be able to do that at, at the channel level. Um, so the guest experience for collaborating, collaborating with guests outside your organization is being improved. Uh, we got another one. One is a fun question and then a serious question. They wrote it as Santa. They said, <laughs> One, do you have any cookies? And then no. two, <laughs> what, 
what license do you need to actually get Teams? Uh, you should have an enterprise license, but recently Microsoft added it to business premium. Um, however, you need to watch the functionality. Um, if you just wanted to use it for collaboration, um, you could get the business premium license that includes it. Um, but pretty much everything you'd want to do, um, especially if you move up to calling, um, and probably for meetings, is you want one of the enterprise licenses. Probably an E3 or possibly an E5. E5 includes phone system and it includes audio conferencing. So depending on which license you get will depend on what functionality is included. Okay, and the last question is, um, is there a way to create private channels within your teams? Yes, and we were just looking at this yesterday because they're adding um, functionality and one of them is private channels. That might be the way that Microsoft's going to get around um, the fact that if you add somebody to a team, they would have access to the entire team. Certainly if you add a private channel, it's going to be private to only the members you add to that. There's some other channel functionality coming up um, for conversations, so uh, we can get back to you with more details on that, but those features are continually being added and enhanced. It's just going to get better. Okay, I think that's all the questions we have. Um, Jeff, we want to say thank you for stopping by and giving us a, a review of what Microsoft Teams can do. Great. Can I go on Christmas vacation now? Absolutely. Bye. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> but thank you all for joining us as well um, for another Microsoft Teams webinar. We look forward to seeing you soon. If you have any questions or any concerns about what your setup is or if you're interested in it, please contact us at uh, redriver.com as well as um, stay tuned for more uh, webinars. We'll also be sending a copy of this uh, webinar presentation and demo to you following, the, following today. So thank you again, and uh, we look forward to seeing you to the next one.